This is the Adisco Area Measurer, made, I'm guessing, around the 1950s by Advertising Displays Incorporated in Covington, Kentucky. It has a plastic disc with a marked scale around the outer edge and a swiveling clear arm with another scale on it. It's an area measurer. Huh? Oh, area meter. Put this thing down next to any shape. Swing this thing back and forth over here and it measures the area. The Adisco area measurer is super rare. I had never heard of it before I saw it on eBay one day and I bought it immediately. Searching online after the fact, I've only seen it mentioned three times. This museum in Australia has one. Another museum in London has one. And here's an auction listing, but it's paywalled. Start free trial? Not today, Satan. Anyway, it's a planimeter, an instrument for measuring the area of any shape drawn on paper. Now, I'm familiar with a few different planimeter designs. There's the polar planimeter, which I made a video about. Kind of a magical precision area measuring instrument that traces around the outside of a shape and calculates the area. There's a simpler edge tracing design called the Pritz or hatchet planimeter that's fairly easy to make yourself. And then there's the dot planimeter. It's very primitive, but bonehead simple to use and actually quite accurate. I made a video about that one too. And this thing works differently from all of them. Mine didn't come with the instructions, but the auction site has a photo of them. Thanks, Satan! It's not really intuitive at all. I never would have figured this out myself. Since I've used mechanical planimeters before, my first guess was that you roll it around your shape somehow. But it's way too big for that, and the materials are all wrong. The plastic wheel just kind of slides around. It's obviously not meant for rolling. Looking at the museum photos, I learned that mine is actually slightly incomplete. This metal thing on the bottom that holds the pivot is also supposed to have a spike on it. So it definitely doesn't roll across the paper. The spike is meant to hold it still at a specific point on the table. Okay, so I guess you stick it on your paper like this and you somehow swing this arm around. There's a hole at the end of the arm, which is supposed to have a little peg in it, so you can hold on to the peg to help swing it back and forth. So I guess mine isn't in perfect condition, but you know what I have that the museums don't seem to have? The original denim case. Denim! Anyway, here's how you do it. You ready? I'm going to measure this baby Yoda head. Just the face part, obviously. I mean, come on now. You line up the zero with the line to get it started and then put the thing down so the zero point on the arm is at the leftmost point of your area. This is your starting point and the paper needs to stay still now until we're done. To start I look at one on the scale and then swivel the whole thing, the arm and the dial, so that the one on the scale touches the edge of the shape. Now pay attention to that one marking there. With the base fixed you sweep the arm up and across the shape until the one makes it all the way to the top edge. And while we were doing that, the answer dial registered a little bit of area. Now swing the whole thing back to the beginning, this time with the two on the scale touching the bottom of the shape, and you sweep it across again. And you keep on doing this over and over, each time sweep across the shape with the next number up. The dial moves kind of like a ratchet. There's no actual ratchet in there, you gotta hold it down with your finger. You keep doing this across the whole shape and as you go the dial gets increased little by little and it tells you the area in square inches. This one looks like 2.16 square inches. Uh, I pixel counted the original image with software which gave me an actual area of 2.18 square inches so I'm calling that pretty accurate. I love that ratchet type action. It's a ratchet planimeter. I just made that up but it sounds good. The dial only registers area on each upswing. Really, the dial is measuring the area of these little bands as I go. Not exactly the same as the shape I'm measuring, but the bands are narrow enough that it ends up being pretty close. This is actually the same as computing the area by doing a Riemann sum in polar coordinates with like a d theta. That's a smart idea. There's a bit of subtlety in the method here. The bands closer to the origin are thicker than the bands further out. That's so that equal arcs of angles will result in bands with equal areas. Smart! Here, let's try this square, which I measured to be 2 inches on each side, so the answer ought to be 4 square inches. It's pretty darn good! There's one part of the design I still don't really understand. The markings between 15 and 25 are subdivided into fifths. But why? And why only those ones? And how would you use those subdivisions anyway? 
I guess if you had a really small shape, you could just do the whole thing using only that tiny part of the scale and then divide the final answer by five. There's no mention of this in the instructions. Anyway, the whole thing is really nice. It hits a bit of a sweet spot to me. It's complicated, but not so complicated that you can still understand when you think about it. The polar planimeter is just totally magical to me. Like, yeah, I understand the math behind it, but to be honest, it's still a bit too complicated to hold it all in my head at once. And the dot planimeter is the opposite. It's so mathematically simple that there's hardly any magic at all to it. But this thing is like the perfect middle ground. You gotta think carefully about it, and it's a totally non-obvious procedure that you're doing. But once you look at it the right way, it totally makes sense why it works. There's a real satisfaction in using an instrument that's complicated, but not too complicated. What's most amazing to me is that I've never seen a design like this before. I have an old book that describes using the strip method, which you would do by hand with a graph paper or something. This thing is clearly inspired by that general idea, but it uses curved strips, which allows for a simple instrument to do all the measuring for you. And hey, look at this, I even made my own. You can make your own too. Just visit the link down there and print it out. You gotta get one of these. Works pretty good. Obviously, this thing fell through the historical cracks, but I think it's really great. And it's not made by K&E or Dietzkin or some other hardcore scientific instruments company. No, it's Advertising Displays Incorporated. Now, surely these guys didn't conceptualize and invent a totally new type of planimeter at an advertising company. I mean, why would they? And advertising displays? What does that even mean? Either this is like the most boring company ever or it's some kind of front for the mob or the CIA. The only info I can find about Advertising Displays Incorporated is in products related to stereoscopic photography. Their big product was the Stereo Adiscope. It's more or less exactly like the Viewmaster toy, which became a big hit in the 60s and 70s. You look through it and you can see a 3D image. They sold the Adiscope in the late 40s along with some sets of custom-made slides you could look at through it. Fun times! But the real origins of the Adiscope were very serious. During World War II, the Advertising Displays Incorporated made something called the Photo Interpretometer, which was actually a device used by the CIA. I knew it! The military was using cameras mounted on airplanes for reconnaissance, and they realized that a stereoscopic camera rig was even better than a normal one. See, a, a 3D photo isn't just cute to look at. By carefully comparing the two images, you can actually measure the height of an object on the ground, and that's exactly what the photo interpretometer is meant to do. So I'm starting to believe that maybe the folks at Advertising Displays Incorporated really might have invented a totally new type of planimeter. People doing detailed analysis of photographs? Actually, this sounds like exactly the kind of thing they might come up with. As far as I can tell, the advertising display company didn't last long after the war, which is why they're totally forgotten today. Like so many other military contractors, they probably looked at all the stuff they came up with during the war and said, okay, how are we gonna turn all this into commercial products? The interpretometer? How about we turn that into a cute little toy? And hey, didn't one of the boys down at the shop come up with a new kind of planimeter? That'd be pretty cheap to make, right? How about we try and sell that? And hey, don't we have a warehouse full of denim? Ho ho ho, they're gonna remember us forever.